Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Maria here with a new video. And for today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I would personally save my money if I were working for minimum wage. So I feel like I've seen all the time people struggling with this because for most jobs that I worked in high school and college, it was minimum wage or very close to minimum wage that I was working for. So I had, had friends in there that had like bills, had to pay for pay for their apartments, their car payment, their health insurance, just all this different stuff and they made minimum wage as a salary. So I'm going to be talking about how I would have saved if I was them. Also if you're new here, my name is Maria, I do videos on professionalism, budgeting, and lifestyles. If you like those topics then please consider joining the fam, I post every single day and I will leave my social media to the right of this video. So to start out, I'm just doing what the wages are. In my state, technically the wages are at $7.25 per hour, but you don't really see that at any company unless it's a tip-based workplace, which you obviously are making more if you're making tips along with that. So the lowest wage in my state that I've seen for a job that didn't do tips or anything like that is $10 an hour, so that's what we'll be working with today. And that will obviously put you at $1,600 a month, which brings you to a gross of $19,200 a year. So with that $1,600 a month, I would probably take that and not get my own apartment, but instead find somebody to share it with. And I think this would help me a lot with my expenses because I wouldn't want to just like go in and pay for a $1,200 apartment alone and be left with only $400 as my wages because that would be very hard to handle, especially when emergencies came up. So instead, I would probably share, I would get a two bedroom, which in my state is about $1,200 and I would split it with somebody that I know. So my rent was only $600 for that month. The next thing in my state, New Hampshire, car insurance actually isn't required, but I added it anyway because it, you would much rather pay for a $65 worth car insurance a month than you would paying for an accident that costs way more money and you probably can't afford. So I just put car insurance in there because it's way better to be safe than sorry later on. For health and dental, I just put down $100. That's the average amount a month that you're gonna get taken out of your paycheck for health and dental. If you are able to gain that insurance from your company, they take out about $25 a week. I included that because health and dental insurance, making sure that you're healthy, is a very important part of your budget. And then the next thing I added in is groceries. Obviously, you can't go without groceries. Personally, as a single person, when I was in college, I was spending about $25 a week on groceries, which was more than enough to get what I needed. So I put down $100 a month for groceries. And then for my phone bill, lots of people have phones, so I just put down $49 per month. That's pretty much anywhere, not just my state, so I decided to include that as well. And then that leaves you at $913.56 total for your entire expenses for a month, which is on a budget. Obviously for entertainment, it's really like what you would spend, what you would spend on entertainment. So personally, if I was working for minimum wage, I wouldn't be spending a lot on entertainment because the... I would really want to save that extra money for emergencies. Obviously, like go out, like get go out, get a drink every once in a while with your friends, go out to eat every once in a while for special occasions, get that special like birthday present every once in a while. But I think that it's really important to focus on emergencies rather than the fun stuff in this stage. It can be a little bit different if you say have a, a couple who's working for minimum wage and then there's and then they're only handling a one bedroom apartment, then they're gonna be able to like spread out their funds a little bit and put money towards entertainment because they're working together to put up an apartment. But I think at this stage, it's really important to worry about emergencies and saving your money rather than entertainment in your life. Obviously, like, if you save up some money to use it towards something, do that. But, like, I think that saving here is very, very key and very important rather than spending your money on, like, going out when you can make food at home and stuff like that. So that is why I did not include any sort of 
a budget in this video for entertainment but if I were to were to put entertainment in this budget I would probably only put about $50 for myself because I just wouldn't want to mess around with a lot of the money. And so if you don't add entertainment, that will leave $286.42 a month, which is great. And I'm going to be talking about how this can really be built into a lot more if you take the following steps. So you don't want to put this whole chunk into the stock market because you never know what's going to happen with the stock market. It could crash, something could go wrong. So you're not going to have as much stability if you put it in the stock market because you really you really don't know what your stock's gonna do at that moment so it's important to realize that but if you were to split blip both in half say like put a chunk so let me actually just calculate that out so this would make it so you put 143.21 into the stock market and then you saved 143.21 in the bank so in the bank you could do it for a account that does interest and all that stuff and then for the stock market it's going to be really great for you because because if you build up your money in the stock market the interest is going to be so much better than if you were gonna then the interest is going to be so much better than if you were just going to put it in a savings account because savings account interest at least nowadays is not the best so if you put half of it into the stock market then you're really going to see a difference in the amount of money you're making and this will actually allow you to have more room for like entertainment and all that stuff in your budgeting because that you're gonna have all this different different interest coming in especially if you see that a stock is really going up and just like doing really well then you're gonna be able to and you can either decide to sell that stock and make some extra money to pay for things that you want to enjoy you can wait for it to take off even more and see if holding it for a longer time which a lot of people say which a lot of people say is the right way to do it is holding on to it for a lot of time and letting it build up is another great way to do it but by using the stock market method of saving money rather than saving money in your bank account you will most likely be making more money obviously i think it's important to have that stability of knowing that there's 143.21 in your savings account each month if you need it. So like you know it's there. You don't know what's going to happen with the stock market, but most likely it'll be good and you'll be building up money over time. So it's going to look really good for your portfolio. But that pretty much completes my video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helped you if you are currently working for minimum wage and want to take control of your finances more. Finances more. If you like this video, please subscribe and like this video. It would really help out my channel. And I will see you tomorrow in my next video. Bye.